We're fortunate though, and they're very um, proud and privileged to have not one uh, trade union general secretary, but two general secretaries. Now, I know a bit more about the, the next one, uh, Matt. Uh, he became a, a firefighter in 1983. He was doing the job, he'd been doing the job for 22 years when he was elected as the general secretary of the FBU in 2005. And some people tell me, oh, the Labour Party, you know, you can, uh, you can make change. Well, good luck to those that think it. But Matt was a socialist since he was a boy. I've got inside information. <laughs> he joined the Labour Party Young Socialist when he was 16. I think he tried to join it the year before and he wasn't allowed. And in 1991, when he was the chair of Tower Hamlet's Labour Party, he was expelled. And the reason he was expelled was because he was the chair of the anti-poll tax union and he was found to be bringing the Labour Party into disrepute. Matt now represents the firefighters who are facing cuts and attacks to their services like uh, every other body in the public sector. Uh, Matt, you may not know, uh, puts aside a thousand pounds a month from his salary into a campaign fund from which he makes donations to causes the labour movement causes that he thinks are worthwhile and i think we should be very um, glad uh, and grateful that he's thought it worthwhile that tusk is a campaign that he's made a donation from his campaign fund of two thousand pounds to help us in this election and particularly <laughs> Because we've got, as you'll hear later, two members of his union in London standing as candidates. But if I can ask Matt to address the meeting. Comrades, uh, brothers and sisters, it's a great pleasure to be here uh, tonight. Uh, at difficult times for working people. We've just seen the budget, I'm sure everybody's been following what's uh, gone on today in terms of the, uh, the budget and uh, even Miliband, even Miliband said it was a budget for millionaires. No surprise uh, for us in this room that it's a budget for millionaires made by a millionaire's uh, government. Uh, it's a budget that's about cutting taxes for those at the very top, cutting taxes for corporations as Bob has said, but they don't even pay the corporation rate of tax anyway. Uh, effective rate of tax for big business in Britain is about 7 to 8 percent below the rate of tax. So, what we will have at the end of this is big business on their profits paying a lower rate of tax than anyone in this room is paying on your earnings. That's the reality of Britain uh, under Cameron and the coalition. <coughs> and for the rest of us, of course, it's all about uh, austerity. And they're saying that they're going to uh, bring in this explanation on your tax. Uh, statement every year of where your taxes go and then maybe you know that might sound quite interesting to see uh, how much of your tax goes to fund illegal wars in Afghanistan and so on but there, there's one real reason and it's come out in the past few days of why they want to do that they want to focus again on welfare they want to tell to say to people you're paying 180 pounds a year to fund people on welfare whatever it is because there is a huge agenda to attack uh, those at the bottom in society, those unemployed and poor and dis people with disabilities and people on housing benefits and so on. And of course there's a whole number of reasons for that. One is to cut, uh, cut the deficit as they say, but it's also about sending a message. It's about disciplining those of us who are still in work. It's about saying, if you don't toe the line, if you step out of the line, if you stand up to the bosses, if you go on strike and so on, then look, that's what's the prospects for you if you put out of work. So when they talk about flexible labour markets that they're on about, then that's what it's all about. It's about driving down living standards for those on the bottom, for those unemployed and people reliant on benefits, but it's also about driving down living standards for every single one of us in work or out of work. And that's why they're also talking about regional pay in the public services. Because what they're saying is, if the private sector can only afford poverty wages in parts of East Anglia, or poverty wages in the South West or wherever it is, then those in the public sector should be driven down to those poverty wages as well. That's the agenda that we face uh, 
in terms of this government. And there is huge anger. I think Bob's right. There are millions of people out there who are angry at what is going on and who are looking for an alternative. But unfortunately, increasingly people are cynical because they've seen what the last Labour government did. And one thing that astounds me about the trade union movement is that everyone was angry under New Labour about privatisation, about a tax on pensions that we had then as well. But suddenly this lot are in, and yes, things are bad, things are outrageous, and the attacks have to be resisted. But suddenly everyone wants to forget what happened under Blair and Brown. Well, I don't think we can afford to forget because we don't want to repeat the same mistakes again. But you look to what Labour say. We've got a Labour leadership that condemns people for taking strike action to defend their pensions outrageously. One of the biggest attacks on pensions is this shift from how pensions are increased uh, each year to take account of inflation, from the retail price index to the consumer price index. And even John Hutton, a traitor to the Labour movement, says that that will wipe off about 15% of the value of a pension over the course of someone claiming it. So a huge attack on working people. And yes, it's primarily directed at the public sector, but it will also affect everyone on state pensions and increasingly in the private sector as well. So that is an attack on anyone, unless you're a multi-millionaire, anyone uh, who becomes reliant on benefits or any form of pension. And how, what a way to gain some support by standing up and challenging that. But what Labour did was instruct their MPs to abstain on the issue in Parliament. That's the opposition we got from Labour. Labour, who then says that actually they support a pay freeze in the public sector. So people who are already suffering, who've had two years of a pay freeze already, whose living standards are falling, are told by the Labour leadership, the so-called alternative, that uh, they have to just suffer it. On the 50 pence tax, I was driving back from Bournemouth today listening to Labour commentators. Will you put it back? Well, we'll have to think about it at the time. That's what Liam Byrne said on the radio today. Haven't even got the nerve or the confidence to say, not only will we put it back, we'll increase taxes on the rich and we'll force them to pay their share. So, the truth is that the Tories are building on what New Labour did in terms of privatisation of tax on public services and so on. So I'm very pleased to be here tonight. I'm very pleased to be here to support Tusk in the Greater London uh, Assembly elections, particularly because we have two of our members standing on that list, Ian and Sean, who will speak uh, later. Because firefighters are under attack, along with everybody else in this uh, society. We want Johnson gone as the Mayor of London. We have in the Fire Authority this guy, Brian Coleman, you may have seen him on the news occasionally, uh, the Tory Chair of our Fire Authority, and he's hated by firefighters, not just in London, but up and down the country for his attacks on our service and his attacks on our members. And one of the reasons he's hated is because of this private company he brought in to run the fire engines in London, Asset Co, a gang of people who have made a lot of money at ta council taxpayers' expense, and then it's all gone wrong because Asset Co can't deliver the service, and then use the same company to bring in private strike breakers when our members in London are dared to go on strike. So we want an alternative to that, but then we look to Labour. When did the Asset Co contract come in? When were our fire engines privatised? They were privatised under Labour as well. So that's the reason why our members and our officials and our committee in London have <coughs> discussed in detail the need for an alternative and have supported this campaign and I'm proud to do so likewise. And I'll just finish on a couple of uh, points. Labour say that they want to be the sensible, sensible opposition, that they won't make promises that they can't afford to keep, they won't make promises until they see the state of the uh, public finances at the next general election. Well, what people want is a real opposition. An opposition will stand up and say what they're doing to us is wrong. 
What they're doing to us is an attack on the vast majority in the interest of a tiny minority. That's what people are looking for in society today. And an organisation, if we can build an organisation that starts to set that agenda, yes, we may be small tonight, but we can grow into thousands and hundreds of thousands if we set that as a target. Because the truth is, their policies, people talk in the trade union movement and the Labour leadership about the cuts being too fast and too deep. Well, the FBU is very clear. We reject the whole cuts agenda. We reject the whole austerity agenda. And our message is working people shouldn't have to pay for the crisis that was sparked by the banks. And I think that message from ourselves, from the RMT, from the people on the Tusk list will get an echo, can get an echo. Because the alternative is dire. The alternative is more and more of these attacks, more privatisation, more cuts in our wages, more unemployment, a future that offers nothing to the millions, but everything to the millionaires. So the task we have to place in front of ourselves today is to, yes, go out, campaign for the Tusk list in the GLA elections, but also, I'd say, go on from there and build a movement that can really start to challenge the people in power in society today and build a society in the interests of the majority. Thank you very much.